All right, hey everyone, uh, let's try this again. Now that I think the sound issues are fixed, uh, but I will wait for the live chat uh, to tell me if they can actually hear me this time. Uh, this, none of this was my fault. Zoom decided to change the audio default to the phone instead of the computer, but it was still like I was running the tests and I'm using the computer, but on their end, they were expecting a cell phone or whatever. So it's insane. I can't, I got to get off Zoom. It, it's just become such a horrible mess ever since the lockdown and everyone started using Zoom. It just became a useless disaster. It's like Skype. Like Skype used to be great and then Microsoft buys it and it's a disaster. So here we go with Zoom. Hopefully StreamYard will be better. I got to try that one out. Uh, maybe next week. All right. Enough complaining about Zoom. Let's uh, go to the charts. All right, of course, if you want to support, please check out the tonevase.com affiliate page. All right, we're going to go with Hyperwave. Hey, Leah, how are you? Let me know if you want to join. I can give you a link. It'll be like old times. There you go. Feel free to join. Say hello. Here's the Hyperwave look at Bitcoin. We have another week and we have another candle, which will start today. As you can see, we have been perfectly rejected by this Hyperwave Wave 7. Of course, we'll always get perfectly reject, rejected by um, someone is saying StreamYard is okay, but it's $25 per month. I pay more for Zoom. I pay like 40 or 45 a month. So 25 a month is going to be a discount. All right, so we have a Hyperwave Wave 7, which can be adjusted forever. Um, and right now we are rejected right here. And I'm not walking away from these arrows. I have no reason to at the moment. All I see is us being delayed by a couple of weeks, a couple of candles, not a big deal. Uh, so let's see where this goes. If the market continues to pull back, I can certainly see uh, the price of Bitcoin continuing to do so. The monthly chart, however, remains bullish. You can see all three moving averages are properly aligned. The smallest above the intermediate, which is above the long term. We have yet uh, another count to the upside. So we had a price flip to a green one. We have a green two, and now we have a green three, and each one started trading above the prior candle. That remains bullish. If we look at our monthly oscillators, I like doing this to kick off the week. If we look at our monthly oscillators, the RSI looks decent. It is neither bearish nor bullish. It is just neutral. Oh, hope I didn't turn that off. I did turn that off. Can I bring that back? I think I can bring that back. I can slowly. All right. Uh, the MACD is really neutral as well. The MACD could cross over next month, uh, the, but the MACD is also neutral. And uh, oh, I don't have the CMF. What I have is a stochastic. And the stochastic is actually leaning bullish to me. So the oscillators aren't really helpful, but the. All right, come on. But the price chart is leaning in the bullish direction on a monthly scale. Here we have the weekly chart that already has today's price in there. We can already see how the CMF is leaning bearish. The MACD is still leaning bullish, but it could be topping soon. Still leaning bullish though. And the RSI will probably be neutral. Yeah, this RSI is neutral to me. So the oscillators aren't really helpful. So we will focus on the price. The price is in its pullback. As you guys know, I like to have this as a top. We also got rejected by the trend line. And I am now looking for a one to four candle correction. 
So the correction began at the very end of this week. So we had a full correcting candle and we are now working on a second correcting candle, okay? So let's wait for that second correcting candle and see what happens. We already pulled back up a little bit. Uh, we must have dropped pretty hard earlier this morning, I guess, when the S&P was crashing in after market hours. Let's go to the daily chart. The daily chart, we are still in this triangle. Let's look at the oscillators real quick. Here's the MACD. The MACD is very clearly bearish here. Let's look at the RSI. The RSI is also bearish. As you can see, the RSI is breaking below the prior swing low. If we close today at that level of the RSI, that is a pretty bearish sign. Oh, I didn't mean to draw another one. I just wanna make this one red. That is a pretty bearish sign for the RSI the RSI. Yeah, so the RSI is bearish. Let's take a look at the BitMEX funding rate. And the BitMEX funding rate is starting to favor the bulls because the BitMEX funding rate is usually in the opposite direction, but it tends to stay there for a little while before actually taking its effects. It likes to maximize, you know, total pain. In the options markets, we refer to that concept as max pain. Uh, there is a max pain value of every single asset from Tesla stock to S&P 500 to gold. And if the price closes at max pain, that means the maximum amount of options expire worthless. And like magic, the price tends to close near max pain. So don't be a sheep getting stuck in max pain. Right now, what am I thinking? Well, we did break the parabolic SAR, the lucid SAR, I should say. Uh, we broke the lucid SAR to the downside, indicating uh, more downside. We also did something interesting right here. We broke to a new intraday low versus the prior swing low, which took place four days ago. And at the moment, we are sitting at a new daily close assuming we close the day here in about 10 hours or so, which we don't know. We're also breaking below a moving average, but we are at the bottom of this triangle. So, but, but the counts are in the middle of their bearish move towards a nine. So right now, the only thing that is keeping me bullish on a daily scale is the potential for this to be a clean hammer reversal candle and the bottom side of this triangle. That's it. Those are the only two things that are keeping me bullish. The bearish case on a daily scale is much bigger than the bullish case. We have broken the lucid SAR, which means uh, we are in a bearish posture. We are currently below the moving average, but still have to close there. We have completely no areas of support. We have open air all the way down to 8,300 where we touch this move and average once again. But if we get there, we will then double bottom versus what happened on May 10th and 11th during the halving, which to me is a bearish sign indicating more downside. So at the moment, I'm still gonna be, I guess, hopeful that there is a chance that Bitcoin could go higher. But the moment, if tomorrow is another bad day and the price of Bitcoin is hovering around 9,000, right now we're at 92. But if tomorrow we are closer to 9,000 than we are to 92, uh, all of those bullish things that I just mentioned, both of them go away. And then there is nothing on a daily chart that suggests bullishness other than the BitMEX funding rate. And that's it. We got to go over to stocks in a minute. Let's go to the four hour chart. The four hour chart is completely screwed. Uh, so we have, we are, this channel no longer applies. Uh, the CMF is uh, getting positive now. That's good. Uh, we did reverse pretty strong. 
on a four hour chart overnight. And, uh, but I don't think this is gonna amount to that much. I really think lower Bitcoin prices are coming just like I think lower stock prices are coming. Speaking of stocks, we need to head over there. Also gold. Gold, this is surprising to me. I was really anticipating gold to rally today with a drop in the S&P. This gold pullback is a little surprising. Let's wait and see what happens the rest of the day. I'm a little surprised by this. I mean, I would have been bullish gold. I am bullish gold going into today, going into this week. Uh, it's still consolidating here, but I'm still optimistic and bullish on gold. Oil, I'm not. And I kind of, I called this top and oil right there properly. I've been talking about this as the top and oil. And I do think oil is going to go lower. Uh, the MACD has turned, the RSI has turned, everything is turning. Uh, oil is playing out exactly like it's supposed to. Let's look at the daily RSI, or is this the weekly RSI? This is the weekly, oh, uh, sorry. This is the weekly S&P. That is a gap. That's a gap that will close. I don't know if it will close this week, but it's certainly a gap that will close. There aren't that many gaps on this S&P weekly. There is a big gap right here between March 30th and April 6th. Well, yeah, because we closed at the end of the week on like April 4th or whatever. Uh, we closed down here and then we opened way up there. Uh, this gap, it needs to be, it would be nice to see this gap close, but it doesn't have to. This could be a breakaway gap. Either way, I am looking for a bigger pullback here. Let's, let's look at the daily chart on the cash market. The daily chart in the cash market just made a new low early this morning. And right now we're at 10 a.m. So it's possible we should probably be reversing to the downside right now when I go and take a look at the 10 minute candles on the futures. Your MACD has crossed over, your RSI is heading down. All of those are very bullish signs for the daily S&P. To me, the daily S&P topped on a, on a double nine because this was a gap day. This was a gap day right here that created the price flip. And in a futures market, there was a clear nine there. Let's go to the futures market. Here's the 10 minute chart. Uh, the 10 minute chart made it slow at around two o'clock in the morning Eastern time. And we opened to the downside immediately reversed. So here we are at 10 a.m. And we're still rising, so I'm not ready to call a top. Maybe it'll take another hour. But I do think at some point today, the market will turn and start to go down. I am still bearish in the market. I have a short position in the market. What's your opinion on the coronavirus vaccine stocks? I have no opinion. I don't know which vaccine stock is going to make the money. I, I, I'm, I'm never going to take that vaccine. Also, you got to see how many people will take the vaccine. God, this Corona thing is really insane now because of all the protests. So some cities are saying that we have a huge spike in Corona cases and other cities are saying we have no spike in Corona cases, both cities with large protests. So someone is lying. Someone is straight up lying. Either the cities claiming that they have a spike in Corona cases due to protests are lying or the cities that are saying we don't have spike in Corona cases and protests go on as big as you like, go ahead and loot, go ahead and break shit. Um, but there's no Corona to worry about. Yet you still can't go and get a haircut uh, because the, it's too dangerous to open stores unless uh, you're breaking their windows, then it's fine. Yeah, so, so somebody's lying. So, half the, uh, so I have no idea. 
I, 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 I no longer want to waste my brain cells trying to figure out the bullshit of uh, coronavirus versus uh, it's safe to have a protest because there's no coronavirus. Yeah, not only am I not taking the vaccine, I will encourage anyone around me not to take that vaccine. I mean, unless you're over the age of 60 and in bad health. You know what the best solution to the coronavirus is? Get your health in order. Start eating right and start exercising. Like I'm tired of making excuses for people that are just walking around like zombies. In some cases, wobbling around like zombies. All right. So the S&P is rising right now, but we're still down pretty heavily for the day. That is an encouraging candle. The question is, will this candle hold into end of day? We do have uh, the support line right there and the support line does not break unless you close below the support line. The prior two support lines uh, were not endangered and we created a new one by forming a brand new run up to this double nine. And this is why I really like the double nine. The futures market called it absolutely perfectly. And this is why I was able to short right there off the double nine. I'm still fully in my short. My short is using options on SPY. And I did not get out this morning for obvious reasons. I was dealing with a stream. So I haven't opened my brokerage account yet. My target is still down in the $2,800 area. I don't normally have targets. An ugly old goat wrote an article over a year ago and he recently pulled it up. Uh, I shouldn't have closed the, the page. But an ugly old goat uh, wrote an article off of something I said that you can measure risk. You can't measure reward. You can't measure expected reward because the market can do anything. I do have my stop losses in place. If the S&P goes above last week's high, I think the bottom is in. As long as the S&P is not going above last week's high, I don't believe the bottom is in. So I'm still anticipating lower prices later today and later this week. Uh, people keep mentioning Tesla. I uh, no comment really it's pulling back Tesla had a weekly top and a monthly top by the way hopefully this month I can release the latest version So there's not much I can say about Tesla other than I think Tesla is going to pull back. I think, but I think everything is going to pull back. That is a gorgeous reversal candle right there. That is a huge reversal candle. And it's time for Tesla to pull back. Let's look at it on a monthly chart. It's time for Tesla to pull back, guys. I, I don't know where the buying opportunity is. Got to wait. Hopefully, I won't miss this buying opportunity this time. All right, uh, let's go back to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is still very correlated with the market. 
It's something I've been saying for a while. Thanks, Maz, for the questions. So look, Bitcoin is correlated with the stock market. I'm not going to deny that. You can see it. Uh, Bitcoin bottomed at the same time as the S&P bottomed in the middle of the night. Here's what I've been saying for a long, not a long time, but here's what I've been saying for the last month or two. If S&P goes down, so will Bitcoin. But I can envision S&P going to new lows, but I just cannot see Bitcoin going below the 200 week moving average. And it's not going to get there tomorrow either. So I, it's hard for me to envision Bitcoin falling below six or 7,000 at this point. Uh, if Bitcoin crashes today, I can see it going down to 6,000. But if Bitcoin takes a month or two to go down, then I don't see it going below 7,000. I think 7,000 is going to be the next buy the dip. That's assuming the S&P 500 crashes. So assuming that the S&P 500, and I'll go back to the weekly chart here. So assuming the S&P 500 goes down and challenges, say, 2650, 27, maybe even close this gap around 25. So if the S&P is going to keep going down and start going below 2750, as, uh, going as low as 2500, even if the S&P has a serious crash going all the way down to 2000, making a new secondary low, even if that happens, I do not envision, and I repeat, I do not envision Bitcoin going below the 200 week moving average. And the longer it takes for Bitcoin to go down, the higher that 200 week moving average is going to be. So in a perfect world, we get a pullback in Bitcoin uh, into mid August, mid to late August, where it touches 7,000, people will panic. I will sell my car and maybe my apartment and go all in. I don't mind. Uh, I, I went into Bitcoin down here, but it was hard to liquidate big assets. I want to buy Bitcoin when it's ready to go up. That's it. Like had I sold my assets back here, I wouldn't know where to live and how to drive for like two years. But doing it at the right time, preparing for the next bull market is better for me. You know, I don't mind giving up one or two doublings in the beginning uh, in order to get to my goal of new all-time high within the next six months, let's say. Because if we pull back to 7,000 and then we come back to 10,000, in say December or January, obviously I will know, I'll win both of my bets that are currently in place. I have a bet that we will not fall below 3,800. And I have a bet that we will not spend more than 90 days this year above 10,000. I've only lost seven days so far. I'm seven days down on my bet, seven out of 90. And if we are pulling back into 7,000 over the next two to three months, I'm going to win that bet. We're not going to spend 90 days above 10,000 because it'll take us another month or so to get back above 10K. All right, let's take a look at your questions. Tone, is this sell-off due to the story of second wave coronavirus worries or is this a long overdue pullback? It's a, it's a short overdue pullback, not a long overdue pullback. Everyone knew that Corona round two may or may not come, depending on whether you believe Corona round one was actually dangerous or not. See, the, the whole thing with Corona is, see, it's tricky. Corona is more dangerous than the flu, and at the same time, it is less dangerous than the flu. If you have any kind of a math background, what, what coronavirus is, it's a bell curve with like a really fat tail with like, or two fat tails. It depends if that bell curve is based on age and health or 
if it's based on the severity. So here's my view of the coronavirus. If you are young and healthy, it is significantly less dangerous to you than the flu. I could have had this thing and not even known. But if I had the flu, I would know. I'm not worried that the flu would kill me. But if I had the flu, I've never had the flu, by the way, but, but I've heard horror stories. And, you know, young people do get the flu. It's not as life-threatening as older people. Like my, my, my mom always gets the flu uh, shot, but I don't think my dad does. So in any case, so this coronavirus is a lot less dangerous than the flu for certain people, but it is a lot more dangerous than the flu for other people. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And people just can't rationalize the fact that it is dangerous for some and less dangerous and, and not dangerous at all for others. And they just can't rationalize it. What are my thoughts on five plus year investment in gold? I think gold will uh, make, a, make a significant top in the next five years. I, I do think gold is ready to break out. I hate to go against Harry Dent, who I actually like. And uh, Harry Dent's been pretty right on gold. He's been a gold bear in forever. Uh, I only became a gold bull recently. I've been a gold bear pretty much since 2012, 2013. And I've been a big gold bear waiting for gold to go below uh, 1,000. But, and this is a big but, and this is back when Tyler Jenks was still alive and we were discussing this. Once gold broke this Fibonacci line, I had Fibonacci lines on here. What happened to them? Huh. I guess I took out the long-term Fibonacci sequence on the gold chart. I can bring it back. I still have that one. Once gold, turn a magnet on. Once gold broke the 38% Fibonacci, you see it right here. Once gold broke 1370, I became a gold bull. That is what makes me a bull. The break of that area. Now, once we broke the 70, the, sorry, the 68% Fibonacci line, I am now a gold bull to new all-time high. This is the simplest TA ever. Whenever a rebound goes back above the 38% Fibonacci and the longer it, sorry, back about the 38% Fibonacci, right? And the longer it takes, the more challenging the 38% Fibonacci is, the more bullish I would be. So Tyler Jenks and myself both went bullish. Go back to our videos from a year ago, June of last year, we both became gold bulls right here, became gold bulls. And This is where I became a gold bull. Beautiful rejection of the 62. Beautiful pullback to the 50. Beautiful break of the 62. This was Corona. The big crash was Corona. So that's a little bit out of character. But now we're back and we've broken the 76.4. Or the 70, what was the other one? 70, well, I don't remember. There's like two choices there. And I like this consolidation and I like the breakout. But what happens to gold in five years? Well, it depends how high gold goes. I'm a seller of gold at 5,000. Like I cannot see gold going above $5,000 in the next five years. If gold breaks the all-time high and it doubles over the next year or two, remember once gold breaks the all-time high, it can double in a year. We can go from 2,000 in gold 
to 4,000 in gold because the FOMO will take over. It's like Bitcoin. Once Bitcoin broke 1,000, it was at 20,000 the same year. I can see the same thing in gold, just not, but gold has a much bigger market cap, so it's harder to move the price. But I can see FOMO and gold taking it from 2,000 to 5,000. But then from 5,000, we're going to crash back down to 2,000 at least. So if I do, if I am still holding gold into 5,000, that's what I'm selling. All right, next question. Bitcoin just cracked the 50-day moving average. Is this worrisome? Uh, do you put much weight on the 50-day moving average? I do, but I don't know what time frame you're talking about. Are you talking about the 50-day? Guys, oh yeah, 50-day moving average, you are. That's the 50-day moving average. Yeah, I, I said that earlier that uh, that's a bearish sign. But cracking the 50-day moving average means nothing. You need an entire candle below that average, like open to close an entire candle. See, if we look at it in reverse, right here, we got rejected by the 50-day moving average. Right here, we broke the 50-day moving average, but it wasn't until this candle here where you have a full candle, the full range of the candle is above the moving average. We went up, we pulled back. We never had a full candle below the 50-day moving average, and now we're rising. Can this be the reverse? Of course it can. Let's go back one more and use the same logic. Here is the candle that breaks the moving average. This is a very different break of the moving average. It's the opposite of this break. Notice how this break of the moving average takes place at the very top of the candle, of the big candle. This break of the 50-day moving average takes place at the beginning of the candle. But this is the candle that has its full range above and below the moving, uh, sorry, full range below the moving average. That tells you that the break is legit. If you don't have a full candle on the other side of the moving average, the break is not yet legit and it probably can still hold the price. These are the tone vase rules. I, like, I, I don't know what other people teach you. And then we pulled back, came close to uh, back testing and then we fell. So yes, the 50 day moving average is very significant. Let's look at it one more time. Right here, we got rejected. Here is a candle where the majority of that candle was above the moving average. And it was a doji candle that closed above the moving average. But it was the following candle that had its entire range of that daily candle above the 50 period moving average. And now we go up. So this has been a very good barometer of where Bitcoin is going. Right here, same thing. Here is the, break, the candle that breaks the 50 period moving average. That little uh, bullish candle is uh, the candle that fully underneath the moving average. The next candle, and both of these candles almost break the lucid SAR. Now you have two consolidating candles fully below the 50 day moving average, and then down we go, breaking the SAR and keep going. The opposite happened here, but this trade would have been rough. Bitcoin spent almost an entire month or an entire month above the 50 period moving average, but it was dropping the entire month. You didn't lose much money, but clearly that's a losing trade. And here's a case where the logic failed. Well, this is debatable. Right here, the close of that candle is actually not, actually, no, it's not debatable, I'm sorry. Here we break the moving average, but the next candle is not spending its entire like length of the candle. The range of the candle is half, half the candle is above the moving average, half is below. That doesn't count. So this is not a break of the 50 period moving average. These are the tone based rules. This is what I teach in this, uh, by the way, please support with the affiliate page, but on demand video, by the way, I'm going to redo this maybe in two weeks. Uh, I, I, I'm ready to reteach intro trading. And this is where I teach moving averages and stuff as well. And this is the kind of stuff I teach. So I just want to point that out. So to understand, like moving averages are simple. How do you trade the moving averages is the big question. How's the S&P doing, by the way? 
Yeah, I still think the S&P is going to be going down. I'm still bearish the market. Let's go back to daily Bitcoin and talk about moving averages. So this candle here is not a break of the 50 period moving average. Not to me. Not to me. This one is more so only a tiny bit of that range was below the average, but the body is above in full. This one is borderline. Uh, but you need a clear break of the moving average, like clear space. And then right here, we fall below. Uh, here we have clear, we kind of have clear space, but every single candle is still touching the moving average. If you really want to play it safe, you need a candle completely on the other side of the moving average. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Like even here, you see this? This candle did not fully clear the moving average. So that's not enough for you to assume that it's going to keep going down. I need a clear break. This candle did it right there. This candle is fully on the other side. But this candle is also fully on the other side to the upside. So you did get whipsawed around a little bit on that. All right, probably spent way too much time talking about moving averages. Yeah, this is going to be, so I'm going to, when I redo this, this is actually, uh, it says this three and a half hour introduction to trading on technical analysis. I'm going to make this a good five to seven hours or something. And it's not going to be, uh, there's going to be no sequential stuff. It's just going to be, intro to TA. And then I'm going to combine these two, which is risk position size, leverage management and entries X stop losses. These are about three to four hours each. And I'm going to combine those into a single uh, one hour, sorry, one hour, like six, seven hour. Okay. Let's look at gold again. I'm very surprised gold is dropping. Let's go to the daily chart. I'm very surprised gold is dropping. Uh, it's starting to tick back up. I can see gold closing at a green candle today. I really do. And I can see S&P uh, closing as a red candle today. Well, it's already a red candle, but not a reversal candle. All right, we got more questions. How much money did you make playing poker Friday night? <laughs> not much. But I finally didn't lose. And in case the IRS is watching, since this is the first time I actually beat my friends in poker, I still lost more money in poker this year than I've made. Where is the anti-market trade? Gold metal down, equities down, Bitcoin down, bonds barely moving, is cash king for a while. I still think it's gold and Bitcoin. I still think gold will be the counter asset trade. I just don't think it's going to be easy. I think gold is putting people to sleep with its consolidation. I think that gold is going to frustrate people. It can consolidate the rest of the month and then break out. See the way gold broke out right here? We went from 1670 six straight up a hundred points so i can see gold continuing to consolidate the rest of the month and then break out above 1750 and be at 2000 in a blink of an eye so i still think gold is the counter trade if you have to if you had to lock up $1 million in Bitcoin or Tesla for five years, oh, that's easy. Of course, it's Bitcoin. Oh, of course, I'd rather lock up $1 million in Bitcoin for five years. When do we get a full fake Satoshi update <laughs> of the latest developments? I can't. I can't. The, too many lawyers are involved in that case. They know too much. They can't talk about it. Noob question. Why does anyone anticipate a Bitcoin ETF when GBTC is basically all that you need? Uh, no, it's not. Um, how would a Bitcoin ETF be different from GBTC? It won't have that ridiculous premium. And it won't have the stupid 
of uh, Grayscale's uh, shitcoin stupidity in it. Here, this is Grayscale's deck. Look at these amazing products. Bitcoin Cash down 83%. Grayscale Ethereum down 82%. Ethereum Classic is at least up 20%. I have no idea what Horizon is, but it's down 76%. Litecoin down 82. Stellar down 69. Ripple down 82. And the winner of dumb ETFs or dumb trusts for people to lose their money in is Zcash down 86%. So there you go. Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund since inception down 61%. But hey, Bitcoin is doing well. Look at that. Oh, it has the highest return for the last 12 months and obviously the highest return since inception. I will say that inception for Bitcoin started a lot earlier uh, than many of the others. Uh, many of the others did begin uh, near the top of the uh, bubble, but these things aren't coming back to their all-time highs, so they're just stupid investments. So yes, I do want a, uh, a Bitcoin ETF so that I don't have to pay a 19% premium that it is right now on uh, Bitcoin in my retirement fund. Because this premium will go away. The liquidity of GBTC will crash once an ETF is out. All right, guys, I want to go open up my broker. Let's go to the 10 minute chart on the S&P. It looks like we topped. We topped right after 10 a.m. I think the S&P is in trouble. How do you see civil unrest playing out in the markets? I think it's very bearish for the markets. Very bearish. I mean, is Minnesota going to come back? The broken windows fallacy doesn't really work. So, you know, if you burn down a bunch of Targets and a bunch of Wendy's and a bunch of Costco's, I mean, their stock's going to go down. I mean, the companies have to use their capital and money to rebuild. No, I, 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 think, I think GLD is too big to fail. I'm not, I'm not really worried about the gold in GLD. What do I think about an S&P hyperwave wave four? I think we're going to go into wave four. I think we're going to start wave four in Trump's second term. But Trump has to get reelected first. So we're going to wait on that. It's only a few more months. Uh, if Trump gets reelected, I can certainly see uh, the stock market go into a wave four of hyperwave. What's your take on sports gambling ETF bets? Interesting. I didn't know there was a sports gambling ETF. How's DraftKings doing? Yeah, it's probably pulling back. Oh, nice. DraftKings is back up. See, DraftKings in a monthly nine and weekly nine. Wow. Look at that. Perfect top right here on DraftKings, monthly and weekly. But now you, you, you may come up on a daily buy. Uh, DraftKings could hang in there, but I think it's, it could be overpriced. I don't know when uh, sports are coming back, but it should be coming back soon. I didn't know there was a sports betting ETF. Bets. 
How liquid is it? Oh, this looks new. This looks new. I was talking about the cannabis sector. Those ETFs are probably doing well. If Trump is good for the stock market, why does it seem like all co co uh, corporations are against them? That is a very good question, KB. If you go to my videos during the last election, if you go watch my October and November videos, that's exactly what I kept saying, that any CEO of a publicly traded company that's against Trump is kind of an idiot uh, because Trump is good for the market. But what a lot of... Uh, what a lot of people think is that they have a better chance of do performing better with their company if they can bribe a Democrat. Because you see, the, the reason why everyone hates Trump is because you can't bribe Trump. Like you can't bribe Trump the way you can't bribe me to be on this YouTube channel. Uh, and um, uh, the, the same way you can't bribe Trump. And uh, I, I know people are going to take the next statement out of proportion but I don't need your money to advertise you on my channel. And that's not because I'm super rich. It's just that I have enough to be comfortable with my life. Even if that comfortable is driving a 12 year old car and living in a 10 year old apartment. Like, like I have an, I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I, I don't need the money uh, for my lifestyle. I'm not saying I don't need the money because I'm super rich. I'm saying that I just don't need the money for my lifestyle to sell out uh, to some you know, scammy ICO. Trump is the same way. Trump doesn't need to sell out. He doesn't need anyone else's money because he has plenty of money and he has plenty of businesses. And he doesn't need uh, you know, to continue his political career. Once he's done with his presidency, that's it. And Trump didn't have to uh, do people favors to get elected. So a lot of people hate Trump because they can't bribe him. Tone, if we get deflation, how do you think gold and Bitcoin will fare compared to the stock market? Uh, it, it'll hold its own. It'll hold its own. But we, we've been in deflation. We've been in deflation for a while. I know I need a better PC. I'm aware of that. I will buy a new computer once it's available for purchase because the one that I want to buy is not yet on sale. Who would be better for Bitcoin, Trump or Biden? Honey Badger don't care. Bitcoin doesn't care if it's Trump or if it's Biden. It'll do its own thing. Neither one of them are... Uh, getting rid of AML KYC laws. Uh, neither one of them are going to uh, go back to gold as backing of the money. Uh, neither one of them are going to stop snooping on your financial transactions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know who would be bad for Bitcoin? If like Gary Johnson gets elected president. That's bad for Bitcoin. Because he's a true libertarian. Or Ron Paul. If Ron Paul gets elected, that's horrible for Bitcoin. The worst thing for your Bitcoin investment is Ron Paul being president. It's the worst thing for your Bitcoin investment. Though I would vote for Ron Paul. Having said that, I would absolutely vote for Ron Paul.
All right, guys. Is it true that Gates did not vaccinate his children? I have no idea, but I wouldn't be surprised. Look, so many people do the complete opposite of what they want other people to do. All right, guys, that's it for me. Please support by checking out the on-demand videos, which I will reteach as webinars. Probably put this up on sale this week. Uh, and then I'm going to reteach these, the risk and entries as one. Uh, probably do it over the weekend for like a six-hour kind of thing. And in the winter, I'll probably reteach the options course. All right, also, please use the affiliate page. Uh, if you are looking for Bitcoin debit card or you're going to use TradingView or you need VPN services. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all on the next one. Time for me to go check out my positions. I'm pretty much only long gold and short S&P right now. And I have, uh, I think, one trade left, which is because I got out of my rig very nicely at the right at near the high and I got out of uh, Norwegian very nicely right at the high so that those two were great trades and Under Armour is my only trade probably was a bad choice uh, but Under Armour I may hold on to it for like the next three to six months I have time uh, that's my last uh, stock trade that I have but I am short S&P and I am long gold so we'll see what happens there all right, guys, talk to you all on the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, if you speak Russian, noon, four o'clock, I'll be on, on four o'clock YouTube channel. Bye, guys.